Okay, here we are with the uh, Yield Bluegrass Condenser Mic. Uh, now this is a very popular and I think great way to perform uh, for a bluegrass band uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, the, the condenser mic, you can actually get the entire band grouping around one condenser mic and you get a very natural reproduction of the, of the acoustic tones of the instruments. Um, you know, it tends to sound, you know, it's just a lot more lifelike and, and acoustic-y than you know, if you mic everything individually. Uh, so that's great, and also you get this uh, interesting choreography, you know, because uh, basically the band is mixing themselves, you know, as, as the, if I'm taking a break, I'm going to come up here to the mic, and then I step back, and then the fiddle player comes in, and then the banjo player comes in, and, you know, singers might kind of group all around and get in close, and it's great because, you know, the, ba for, the band is, is listening to each other a lot more closely uh, than, you know, if you got everyone kind of spread out along the stage, mic'd individually, and kind of listening on stage monitors. So it's just a really great, it's a great thing for, for, for bluegrass music, acoustic music in general. Um, but uh, there's, there's some, some things you need to know about it. And the, the first thing I'm going to talk about uh, pertains to vocal health. Um, now, um, the height of, of, the, of a condenser mic in a bluegrass setting is often not going to be optimal for vocals. Um, and that's because you have to place the mic where it's going to pick up the entire band. So if you have a banjo player, especially if it's a short banjo player, <laughs> they're going to be way down here. Uh, you know, a fiddle player, especially if it's a tall fiddler, it's going to be way up here. So you've got this kind of range from here to here that the mic's got to pick up. And so if you have the mic too high, it'll be all vocals and fiddle. Uh, if you have the mic too low, it'll be all banjo and, and guitar and not enough vocals. So you, know, you kind of have to, there, there's, there's a compromise spot. Uh, in the middle here, and um, the thing is, uh, so if, if I'm going to sing, I'm going to have to kind of to be heard, especially if I'm going to sing something quiet. That's need, I'm going to need to make myself lower to to really kind of address the mic, you know. And the thing is, uh, th there are, are good ways and and not so good ways of of getting down to the level of the mic. And I've got to credit my uh, singing teacher. Uh, Sophie for, for pointing this out to me. This has been really helpful. Um, thing is, if you kind of put your head down like that, you're, you're kind of creating, you're kind of closing things off in, in your throat and uh, can um, end up with a lot of tension in the jaw and the throat. So it's really much better to bend forward from the hips. That way you can keep the alignment of your head and chin on your neck the same by moving forward. So not this, not this, you know, with the chin going up, that's not great either. You really want to keep the head the same um, angle in relation to your torso, you know, properly aligned. Just come forward like this and then sing. Um, sometimes I'll kind of bend from the knees going down like that or a combination. Um, but uh, it's been really helpful for me to learn to just, you know, keep this alignment the same, find I have a lot more power, a lot more endurance uh, when I'm singing. So, uh, so that's one thing. Um, another thing is you, you need to learn how close to the mic to get because these condenser mics are designed, they pick up just the entire uh, area. So what that means is if you do what you might do while you're just on an individual spot mic and like get like right up there, you know, an inch or two from the mic, you know, the vocals, then you're, you're really going to like overpower uh, the microphone and, and all the other instruments. And keep in mind that, you know, the mic is there to pick up everyone. So you, you don't want to be a mic hog. Um, so I generally try to stay, you know, I, I try not to get closer than about that when I'm singing. Uh, occasionally, if I'm going to sing like a real low, quiet note, I'll get a little closer um, because I need like a little bit of extra boost. But um, the you know, same thing would be go would go for fiddlers. I mean, sometimes you'll see fiddlers just get right up on that mic, and all you'll hear is fiddle. <laughs> um, you know, same thing. For guitars. You know, guitars are a little quieter instruments. I, I find they can get a little closer on guitar um, than uh, banjo or something. But uh, now, if you play banjo, uh, for instance, uh, one thing to be aware of is that you know banjos are very directional. So I'm going to say. If I got the banjo a little bit lower, and if I come up to the mic like this, I've seen this over and over again. You know, from the banjo player, I think, oh man, I'm really close to the mic. 
uh, but the, the banjo itself is actually firing under the mic. Uh, so the, the, the pickup area of the microphone is, you can sort of think of like a cone uh, kind of radiating from the mic. So, you know, if you're off to the side, even if you're pretty close, uh, it's not going to pick up as well as if you're right on center but further back. Um, because kind of the, the sweet spot is like right in the middle, you know, kind of out to about here. So again, if you're playing banjo and you kind of get under the mic and you're kind of out of that imaginary cone, you know, the banjo you know, might not be uh, coming through in the mix. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 